Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's video, as the title suggests, we're going to be getting you up to date for 8.3 Elemental Shaman in Arena. For this guide, we've consulted with Jamie, an 11 times rank 1 Shaman competing for AWC Team Diablos Red, previously making multiple showings at BlizzCon with different teams. In this guide, we're going to be including an update on talents, essences, Azerite choices, trinkets, and the new corruption mechanic. Finishing it off by covering your rotation and playstyle inside of Arena. Let's get straight into it then. Starting off as always with the talent section. What we do is we start with a good baseline and then cover any adaptations that you'll want to make to this depending on certain matchups or compositions. A good baseline for talents looks like this. Urban Rage, Totem Mastery, Earth Shield, Master of the Elements, Nature's Guardian, Primal Elementalist, and lastly Stormkeeper. Honestly, for Elemental, there isn't too many adaptations. The only real change you'll ever make to these is on that level 45 row. Whilst Earth Shield provides some good bonus healing, often versus melee teams, you'll want the added damage reduction and movement speed of Spirit Wolf. Other than that, your talents are set in stone. Moving on to PvP talents now, again, let's start with a good baseline. And for this, we recommend Lightning Lasso, Grounding, and Sky Fury. But let's get into why and what other options we have. Lightning Lasso is our first recommended talent. This is a given. There isn't any situation you wouldn't want this. Bear in mind though that Lasso is given by Conflict and Strife for Elemental, so you can sometimes drop this as a PvP talent and pick up Conflict as a Major instead. Our second baseline talent is Grounding Totem. This is a must-have when facing any caster, and even certain melees. A very flexible and good talent. Sky Fury is the primary offensive talent choice. Whenever you're playing with another caster, this also becomes default. And when playing with a melee, this can be a nice boost to your own damage. Combining it with a lasso or earth shock can enable it to really pack that extra punch. Now let's cover some other options. First is Purifying Waters. This talent can be picked up as a defensive option instead of either Sky Fury or Lasso when you're picking up Conflict Major. If you're going to gain value from purging and be the target of the enemy team, this talent is going to give you a lot of value. The other option for a defensive talent is Spectral Recovery. This is great when paired up with the talent Spirit Wolf when you're looking to kite and survive to win the game. And the only other PvP talent worth ever considering is Traveling Storms. Whilst very niche, you can find some uses for it on Zedax's maps or even against Windwalkers to consistently knock their fists of fury. Moving on to essences now, let's first cover the major slot, of which you'll primarily find yourself either using Conflict and Strife or Breath of the Dying. Conflict and Strife is going to be your best defensive option. Not only does it provide a huge amount of versatility that doubles when stunned, but also provides you with your must-have PvP talent of Lightning Lasso then freeing up that spot for another defensive option. Breath of the Dying is going to be your best offensive option. This essence is just incredibly strong as a major. The damage you can do with this combined with either Lightning Lasso or an Earthshock can be absolutely insane. Just more instant burst damage, something that Elemental loves. And then for your minor essences, your first slot is always going to be whichever of the two major essences you're currently not playing. So if you have Conflict as your major, pick up Breath as your minor, and vice versa. To pair with either of those, you're going to want Focus in Iris. This just provides a huge chunk of haste and is really strong on Elemental as it can proc from your Urban Rage, making it stack incredibly fast. Then for your last essence, your best bet is going to be Vision of Perfection. This is just great synergy with Primal Elementalist, allowing you to get those powerful Elementals back sooner. Our next section is going to be all about gearing, where we cover stat priority, Azerite traits, corruption, and trinkets, along with any must-have pieces of gear. Kicking things off with stat priority, Elemental is going to be wanted to prioritize 
versatility, and as much as possible, then looking for haste as a secondary, with critical strike and mastery being on the weak side. In regards to Azerite traits for elemental, it's pretty simple. There's one trait you want to aim for above all else, and that's Lava Shock. Lava Shock is key to your success as an elemental, and is what enables those big earth shocks you so commonly see. Making sure to have three of these is your number one priority. To pair with this, your second best trait is going to be either Heart of Darkness or Natural Harmony. Heart of Darkness provides a huge boost of stats. This is also good to it not being nerfed by 50% in PvP like all other traits. Natural Harmony on the other hand just provides some more stats but it's a little bit weaker than Heart of Darkness. Now you might be thinking where do I obtain this Azerite lineup? Well it all comes from the new raid, with the helm of actualized divisions dropping from the penultimate boss Carapace, having both Heart, Lava Shock and even a Pack Spirit. Shoulders come from one of the earlier bosses Mount, the pauldrons of Ill Portent again have Lava Shock, Heart of Darkness and Pack Spirit. Then for Chest, the final boss and Zoth drops the last vestige of Naltharian, with again Lava Shock and Heart of Darkness. Trinkets have become more and more of an integral part of your gearing, with select trinkets holding so much power. For Elemental, there are two trinkets that you primarily want to aim for. First up is the Forbidden Obsidian Claw. This trinket is just insane. Think of it almost as an upgraded Maledict, dealing absurd amounts of damage if not dispelled. This combined with a Lasso or Earthshock can be some crazy damage. The second trinket is Psych Shredder. This actually is incredibly good for an elemental, as the initial damage portion of it can proc from your Urban Rage, meaning this trinket is just going to be giving you high amounts of consistent damage over the course of a game. Alternatively, some good defensive options are either an emblem or safeguard for those times where you just need that added survivability. Up next, we've got everybody's favourite new addition to the game, Corruption. Insane RNG, balanced damage and just all around fun. There is one Corruption that reigns supreme above all others when it comes to damage, and that's Gushing Wound. This is just incredible. For 15 Corruption, it has the potential to do almost as much damage as 75 Corruption worth of infinite stars. Gushing Wound, hands down, is the best by far for all classes, and Elemental Shaman is no exception. But of course, Corruption isn't a luxury we can all pick and choose. So some other options are percent increases to your favoured stats, so haste and versatility, which are versatile and expedient, with the proc alternatives Racing Pulse or Surging Vitality being just a little weaker, but still okay options, and the damage from Twisted Appendage also isn't too bad, easily killed but can still give you some good damage if they're left up. Another easy to obtain but decent corruption is the Axe from Drestagath, coming with the guaranteed corruption Flash of Insight. This whilst not amazing, is just a guaranteed corruption you can easily get, and it provides you with a good boost to your intellect and overall damage. Infinite stars after the nerf isn't recommended. All this does is encourage dispelling, and with flame shocks being an integral part of your overall damage, it can heavily handicap you. Okay then, we've now covered everything in terms of gearing and setting up your character ready for arena. Now let's discuss rotation. To put it simply, Elemental's rotation revolves entirely around flame shock. You aim to maintain as many flame shocks as possible, which in turn then gives you lava burst procs. These are your primary way to generate Maelstrom. Your Flame Shock ticks also stack up your Azerite trait Lava Shock. Once you have 20 of these, you look to spend your Maelstrom on an Earth Shock. And then you either have Lasso or Stormkeeper as your burst cooldowns. As an elemental, it's very rare that you'll ever want to stand still and cast either Lightning Bolt or Lava Bursts, making sure to always utilise Purge if there is a buff that you can remove. This will essentially be your filler combined with keeping up Frost Shocks to slow enemies. So we've mastered rotation, have all the information on gearing, essences and talents, but what about playstyle inside of Arena? Greater Fire Elemental provided by Primal Elementalist not only deals very high passive damage onto your main target by default, but when summoned, also continuously gives you free Maelstrom every time that a Flame Shock deals damage. Due to this, an integral part of maximizing your node damage is making sure to have multiple Flame Shocks out before using this cooldown, as then it's going to allow you to generate a high amount of Maelstrom for its duration. Furthermore, Fire Elemental also gives you access to Meteor. 
this ability shouldn't be underestimated. You can combine it with Lasso or a big Earth Shock for that extra bit of surprise burst damage. Unlike Fire Elemental though, Earth Elemental provides you with utility and comes with two main skills, Pulverize and Hardened Skin. Hardened Skin is a 40% damage reduction that can be used even whilst you're stunned. So making sure to have your Earth Elemental up before your enemy pops high pressure offensive cooldowns can really aid in your survival. Pulverize on the other hand is an instant 4 second stun. There is of course so many uses for this. You can use it defensively to prevent some damage or crowd control. You can use it to lock down healers so you can secure a hex or you can even use it to interrupt a stun chain onto yourself. Stormkeeper is your main burst damage cooldown. There are two things you need to know about Stormkeeper. First is that this can obviously be cast out of line of sight of interrupts, as it requires no target in order to cast. Secondly, to maximise the damage of Stormkeeper, you need to utilise your Master of Elements buff. So you cast your Stormkeeper, then Lava Burst into Lightning Bolt, and then make sure you Lava Burst once more before you do your second Lightning Bolt. This will then buff your Lightning Bolt's damage by that 20%. Earthshock isn't a cooldown per se, but it requires Maelstrom in order to use, and is one of your main sources of burst damage. Earthshock ideally should never be used into defensive cooldowns from your opponent. Always be looking to deal the highest damage possible with this ability. Also, take into account before using Earthshock, you not only require Maelstrom, but you ideally want 20 stacks of your Azerite trait Lava Shock, and also again a Master of Elements proc. So always make sure to weave in a Lava Burst before using this hard hitting ability. Lightning Lasso is a very strong ability, but requires some setup in order to maximize its use. Now with patch 8.3, Lightning Lasso can now critical strike and it also benefits from the damage increase of Master of Elements. So, not only do you want to set up your lasso by dealing with interrupts beforehand, or making sure to lasso the target with an interrupt, but now you ideally want to combine this ability with again Master of Elements or even Sky Fury. Elemental Shaman has some of the most utility in the game. You've got a knockback, decent off heals, grounding totem, tremor totem, and even a decurse. Using your utility at the right moment is the difference between a good and a bad Elemental Shaman. Thunderstorm should be used either as a tool to either kite, stop casts, or even interrupt abilities like Fist of Fury, or knocking targets out of positional defensives such as Dome of Light or even Urban Wall Totem. Also, Thunderstorm on Zedax's maps gains even more value, as a wild time knockback can change the flow of the game. Grounded Totem is again very important to your kit versus casters. Use this as a way to stop important casts, reduce damage, or even as a way for you and your team to avoid interrupts. A great trick is to pop down Grounded Totem before casting your lasso, as you avoid all magical kicks in the process. The other important thing to keep track of is Tremor Totem. Use this primarily for when your healer is caught into a fear. As for off heals, when playing with Earth Shield, always look to pop Earth Shield on the target that the enemy is training, and when required, throw some healing surges to save your teammates from some sticky situations. Kiting is an essential part of Elemental Shaman's playstyle. This is primarily down to two factors their mobility, and the fact that they're not required to cast in order to keep up their damage. This means, more often than not, kiting is going to be your best action when you're not doing damage. Elemental is extremely mobile due to Ghost Wolf, especially when paired up with talents like Spectral Recovery and Spirit Wolf. This can make it very hard for most melee to be able to connect to you, allowing you to then build distance. To further aid in your kiting, you also have good slowing mechanics. In both the spammable Frost Shock, which you should ideally aim to keep up on all targets, and Earthbind, which is then an easy way to slow grouped up targets. Elemental is very unique in the fact your overall consistent damage is not done by any casted ability. The only time you would ever want to cast is when you have no Lava Burst proc, and then either to hard cast a Lava Burst or a Lightning Bolt to generate some Maelstrom. However, this is often not your best course of action. Purging as an Elemental is one of your most important tools. Not only will this remove healing, damage effects, or many other things, but if you're playing with Purifying Waters, you'll even gain a lot of added healing. Picture Purge almost as your filler. All right then guys, that brings this Elemental Shaman 8.3 update to an end. Hope this was useful, and as always, be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed. And if you do have any more questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.